I thought I'd make this short video as a means of answering some of the many questions that have been posed both publicly uh, and privately to me about some of the videos. And this is an experiment. If it works well, uh, I'll do it again. The only way I'll know if it works well is if you tick the like button. If you do that, I know you want me to do it again. So here are some of the themes that have come out lately. Let me start with this one. It's the EZS clap from Bessie. And you may recall that I said in order to reverse it so that it's a pusher rather than a, a, a clamp, uh, you take this end off uh, and turn it round. And then you had to take the pin off from this end so you could take this off and turn it round. That oh, oh, is absolute rubbish. Uh, all you do is you take this end off by undoing that knob there and you put it on the other end. Now what could be simpler? <laughs> I went through that silly process of taking the pin out. So no, the proper way is you just move this from that end to that end and the job's done. Simple. Now Gary asked me a question about uh, which uh, domino width setting I use. Well with the domino 500 there's a choice of three and I always use the narrow width setting unless I tell you otherwise. The narrow width setting is a setting which matches the dominoes that you buy from Festool, the standard dominoes. If you want to use the other width settings then either you're using that because you're making up wider dominoes of your own or it's because you might want to allow for uh, the relative movement between two pieces of wood that you're joining. And you might then just use a central domino, which is a narrow one, uh, which uh, initially locates the two pieces of wood relative to each other. And then subsequent dominoes in the same long joint uh, might be uh, either the middle or the uh, wide uh, setting. But uh, if I'm using anything other than narrow, I'll let you know. With the big Domino 700, and I don't actually own one yet, uh, I've only borrowed one to do various videos, uh, there are only two width settings, and almost everything that you've seen me do has used the narrow width setting with that. Apart from the gate, when I use my own extra wide dominoes. Now I've received several questions from people asking me uh, which sander to buy first. I've got the Rotex 90 and the Rotex 150 and I absolutely love them both. Now, if you're just going to buy one initially, I would recommend that you probably go for the Rotex 90. And the reason that I say that is because it's so versatile. Because not only is it a rotary sander, not only is it a random uh, eccentric sander, but it's also, if you remember, uh, got the ability of having the delta pad added to it. And so you've really and truly got three sanders in one. And for an initial Rotex sander, this is the one I'd recommend. The Rotex 150, though, if you're always doing huge areas, uh, large pieces of wood and so on, then maybe go for this one first. But for me, this is my second sander. Uh, but they're both absolutely fantastic. Now, there's one tip I'll give you. Uh, if you want to preserve the life of your uh, abrasive sheets, uh, then when you've finished using one particular sheet, you're about to move on to the next, do this trick. Take the brush which fixes on the end of your hose, turn your extractor on. And clean off uh, the worst of the debris. And the reason for doing this is that uh, if you leave all that dust there, slowly but surely it will adhere to the sanding sheet and then it will build up and then it will become a nuisance and you'll eventually have to throw the sheet away. Now I've been asked several questions about my unsung hero, the CTL26 extractor which I have here. And I've had this since the very beginning of my festival days and it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, this arrangement here is a cyclone interceptor, and this is a thing called a dust deputy, uh, and basically it separates out the dust, and the dust drops into this, which is a drop box, and then you periodically empty this uh, out from time to time. The suction power is provided uh, by the CT26, uh, but very little of the dust actually ends up going through into the CT26, therefore my uh, bags uh, last a lot longer. 
I don't have any sponsorship, uh, nobody provides me with free bags, and so I'm having to do everything on a budget, and that's why I use that. Another question came in about my cables, how I keep them tidy. Well, it's dead simple. I just wrap them up like this by hand. I have a loop of string, it goes through there, back through there, and I have a little hook, and that's nice and tidy. I've also been asked about this, and it's the second socket which I've uh, fitted. Uh, I bought it from a Festool supplier, and then I fitted it myself, and I find that really useful. I keep the capex normally plugged in uh, all the time, and then I've got my uh, uh, plug-it cord here uh, for the various other tools that might be used. So I find it quite useful. Um, the part number may vary according to a country, I don't know, so I'm not going to display that now. You'll need to research that or ask your local dealer. And the next question came from Stefan in Germany. Guten Tag, Stefan. Uh, wie geht es? Uh, here is my PSC 420 and his question uh, related to the movement of the blade. I'm just going to remove the battery so that it's safe. I'm going to move the base as well so you can see the blade more clearly. And his question was, should there be some movement like this? And the answer is yes. Uh, that is very much uh, the feature of the Festool Carvex system in that you've got this pendulum motion. The control is set here, but it does allow the blade to move like so. The key thing with the Carvex is to make sure you get this adjustment here uh, for the tension on the blade absolutely right. And the way to do that is to pull back on the blade with your finger, like so, tighten this up until it just catches the blade, like so, and then back off by half a turn. And then that's perfectly set up. Ready to use. And here's a tip so you don't lose the, the little, little hex tool that you use to adjust the blade. Uh, I've put some string around it so that if it falls on the floor you can find it easily. But also, I've put a pair of magnets here. And uh, basically that holds it in place in the sustainer when, uh, when it's in there. And so you always know where to find it. i got a couple of magnets like these. Um, I don't know where they came from. Any old shop I imagine. And I use some of that uh, foam with sticky stuff on both sides, uh, double-sided foam sticky, to stick those in place, and that's what keeps the magnet there. Excellent. You won't lose that little tool again. And the last woodwork one was about the Gothic bench. Someone asked me if it was my design. Yes, it is, and please feel free uh, to copy it. I'd be absolutely delighted. I'd be flattered if you were to copy the design. I'm very grateful for all the encouragement and kind comments after I dipped my toe in the technology side of things when I did the Wacom Intuos 5 graphics tablets. I did the medium and the small. I've actually bought the medium myself and I use it all the time. I use it with Adobe Premiere Elements, which I use for my video editing, and I also use it with Adobe CS5, which I use for my photographic work. And it's absolutely the bee's knees. And I'm going to do more technology, there's more in the pipeline, so watch this space. I am going to address the sound quality on these videos. It's partly caused by the rather echoey workshop, uh, but I think probably mainly it's due to the fact I'm relying on the microphones on the camera. And so I'm hoping to get hold of a wireless microphone system. I'm sure once I do that, sound quality will improve. If you've got a piece of woodworking kit or some bit of technology that you would like to see me demonstrate or review, then do contact me via the YouTube messaging service. But please bear in mind that I only produce videos of items that I'm happy to recommend to my very best friends. Thank you very much for watching this first question and answer session. Uh, if you'd like me to do more, tick the like box. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.